question is still open as to whether it might be included in the final uh, budget or budget implemented because uh, uh, states seem to be moving in the direction of uh, legalizing marijuana. We have several different states on the West Coast now that it began. It's now on the East Coast where Massachusetts has done it, I believe Maine, uh, Vermont. So uh, uh, it is something that would be a significant uh, uh, new revenue source uh, for the state. It would be, uh, if we go by, if we use the Colorado model, which is the highest tax model uh, of the states that have adopted it so far, uh, it could generate well over $100 million a year uh, for us, a new revenue when it's, uh, when it's fully implemented. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's uh, critically important, especially given the fact that first opponents say that we should be making, uh, uh, doing something for tax reasons that might be a bad public health issue. But the problem is we need to recognize that uh, marijuana has been and will continue to be available, uh, legal or not. Uh, and what has happened, of course, is that uh, the experiment with prohibition should have taught us a lesson that we apparently haven't really learned, that after 13 years of, uh, of uh, prohibition on alcohol, and all that happened during that time was the building of huge criminal enterprises, uh, that uh, all of the, the major organized crime uh, uh, families that have operated since then, uh, they made their initial financial stake during prohibition to a great extent. And uh, uh, what happened, of course, at the end of prohibition is that uh, during that year, that period, of course, we had a huge enforcement apparatus uh, built up, uh, both state and federal. Um, and at the end of Prohibition, they had to find a way to continue to justify their existence. And they did that by turning to marijuana and trying to make that, uh, a, a, a try to panic the public about that so they would have the uh, justification for their continued uh, staffing at all enforcement levels, both state and federal. Uh, so we've had this now for 80 years or so of, uh, uh, of trying to make marijuana the, uh, uh, the linchpin of enforcement and uh, uh, justifying all of the uh, uh, money that's spent on that uh, and clearly we see that uh, uh, that hasn't really worked and a few years ago we recognized that uh, many people were having their lives uh, ruined by uh, harsh criminal sentences for relatively minor use of marijuana and we were able to uh, change the law to decriminalize uh, the possession of small amounts of marijuana to make it an infraction that is a non-criminal offense instead of a, of a crime. Uh, interestingly, we did that because of the fact that the example was shown by Massachusetts, just as they have done in now uh, legalizing marijuana in uh, uh, several years of, uh, ago, I think it was probably 2000, uh, 2007 or so, they, or six or seven, or maybe eight, they passed a referendum question that approved uh, the decriminalization of small amounts of marijuana by over a 60% vote. Uh, and uh, the following year, then, uh, then Senator Tony Harp and I uh, introduced a bill to do that in Connecticut. Uh, the first year it got a, in 2009, it got a public hearing in the Judiciary Committee, but didn't go any further than that. But two years later, in 2011, uh, with Governor Malloy in office, uh, he embraced it and we passed the bill to decriminalize uh, possession of small amounts. But uh, leaders of the Massachusetts uh, legislature, whom I spoke with, I'm, I'm a, a vice president of the state legislative uh, leaders uh, uh, conference where we have uh, 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 meetings during the year on, on uh, policy issues and the like. But Massachusetts legislative leaders uh, told me that they would never have been able to pass that bill. Uh, but the public voted for it by over 60%. But the legislature was a more conservative institution than the general public on that regard, and uh, they passed it. Uh, and so I think the uh, Quinnipiac poll showed public opinion in Connecticut is very similar to Massachusetts on that, about 63%. I think in the Quinnipiac poll that was taken about a year ago, uh, the general public uh, recommended that. So, so while it didn't get voted in committee this year, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to make sure uh, that uh, there were actually there were two bills. One was in the public health committee, uh, which was best, uh, basically just a, a statement of concept bill. But we had a fully drafted, detailed bill that was heard in the judiciary committee. Uh, and my thought was that if the issue was going to reemerge, we want to make sure that it is by way of a bill that had a public hearing that was fully drafted, uh, that people had a chance to. Uh, to look at in, uh, in detail, because sometimes in the past there's been a critique that uh, things have been raised as budget issues at the end that have not been fully vetted or not had a public hearing. Well, 